Hello and welcome back to the old Golden Black YouTube channel and you've joined me here today for a special end of transfer window roundup and I'm going to be considering what happened yesterday uh, and also over the whole summer and judging whether or not Wolves had a good transfer window. Now if you consider the team that Wolves had at the end of last season that faced Preston, from that team now we've only got Burgoyne, Cody, Bart, uh, Sice, Enabakare who have played games and who are still at the club from that first starting eleven. Our new starting eleven is Ruddy, Bolly, Miranda, Cody, Douglas, Doherty, Sice, Neves, Enabakare, Jota and Bonatini and it's been that way for the first few games. It'll be interesting to see how it changes when Costa comes back and he is fit. So there's only one real place to start and that's up front in the striker position. Following yesterday's developments and changes at the club we're still left with only Leo Bonatini. Now, lots of Wolves fans are disappointed. I was disappointed last night, but having a little bit of time to reflect on the situation and considering what other options we've got, I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't think it's the end of our promotion push, but it's going to certainly make things a little bit harder. In the first few games of this season, we've seen the front three being quite interchangeable and fluid in the way that they've moved across that sort of front line. Now, with Costa coming back, that gives us yet another attacking option, and perhaps we're going to be seeing more of a style of play that we saw Spain play a few years back now with no recognised number nine striker. Of course, we're used to that playing in the Championship and in England. We used to see a, you know, Steve Bull or Ebanks Blake, a player like that who's going to score you 20 goals a season as a poacher. But the way that Nuno's going to play is going to be a little bit cleverer, expect goals from midfield and from out wide as well, so perhaps it's not the end of the world and perhaps that's why we didn't see extortionate bids yesterday for players like a Phoebe or Hug Hill or R Rhodes that were rumoured to be going about. Of course the main story yesterday was that Wolves were let down by PSV because they were close to signing Jurgen Locadia for £10 million. Now, had we have signed him for £10 million and he'd have gone on to score five to seven goals this season, we'd have called that a failure. I'd never heard of him. Lots of Wolves fans had never heard of him. We were just desperate for a striker and because we didn't get that striker, we were angry. And we don't know who he is. We don't know if he'd been any good. I'm not too happy because in the games that we've seen so far this season, we haven't been prolific. We haven't got a goal scorer who's going to score loads of goals, but we are scoring goals. So over a course of a season, I think we'll be okay. And you know, if it's not working, we've still got the January transfer window to bring somebody in. So moving on then to the rest of the transfers that have come in, John Ruddy and Will Norris in goal. Both look good, steady goalkeepers. John Ruddy's made a couple of match-winning saves already. Will Norris in the League Cup games has been impressive. I think he's quite confident with his feet as well, which is good. And as a young goalkeeper, he's going to be an excellent number two for Ruddy this season. And in the future, hopefully, turn into a very, very good goalkeeper. Now, the defence was the area of the squad that we needed to improve the most from last season. And we certainly did that. The first signings that came in were all defenders. Ryan Bennett, Willie Bolly, Barry Douglas, Phil lafoso Miranda and Vinagre all came in to the defence. And as well with Connor Cody dropping back into that sort of sweeper role, we've got a brand new defensive lineup. And from the game so far, barring a couple of mistakes against Cardiff and not looking too brilliant against Brentford, but still keeping a clean sheet, I'm pretty happy with that defence. And if they can, you know, get used to the physicality of the championship that we've gone on about for the last couple of weeks, I think they'll be a great defensive lineup going forward as well. Now in midfield, of course, the biggest signing, the most expensive signing of the summer was Ruben Neves. And he's certainly shown himself to be one of the best midfielders that we've seen at the Wolves for a long, long time. His long-range passing has been amazing, his close control on the ball and the goal he scored against Hull was out of this world. And already it's clear to see that he's going to be a major part of our team this season. And Dai as well, who came in last night under the radar a little bit because of the disappointment of missing out on a striker. But coming in from Villarreal on loan, he's played at a hull before, so he has got experience of playing in England. He could be a good signer as well and good competition for Sice and Neves in that central midfield role. Jota in sort of attacking midfield or winger sort of position has shown himself to be a very good acquisition as well. Some of the runs that he did against Brentford were very, very good. He had his best game, I think, against Brentford. Uh, but he's chipped in with a couple of goals and assists already this season, so he looks to be 
very, very good too. So in terms of outgoings, Wolves have let go of 17 players, either on permanent or loan deals through this transfer window. But it's been something that they've needed to do for a very, very long time. They've had such a big squad over the last couple of years that people have been sort of coasting. Players like Lee Evans and George Saville and Jed Wallace have not really challenged, you know, are not going to take us to be a promotion challenging team. They sort of all right championship players. Personally, I thought that Dave Edwards still had a role to play at the club, not necessarily as a first team starter, but certainly an important role as a senior member in the squad, bridging the gap between the new and the old. He was somewhat of a fan's favourite. I know that he split, he divided opinions quite uh, a lot as well. But the work that he did in the community, it would have been good to have somebody there like that as well. But perhaps Jack Price or somebody like that, Danny Bart, could be that role model for the younger players going forward. So of course this transfer window with all the outgoings has ended the infamous cosy club which we've seen over the last couple of years of players being comfortable in the team and coasting along and not challenging themselves to improve. Uh, so it will be, will be interesting to see how Wolves as a club cope with the change because of course from May this year to now, it's been a complete upheaval, upheaval behind the scenes and on the pitch as well. I think the fact that there's been so many incomings and it's Nuno's team, Nuno's backroom staff as well, there's, there can't be a big split between the camps. Players like Danny Barton, Jack Price, if they want to stay at the Wolves, they have to buy into it and get stuck in and get their hands dirty and try and get into that team. So a couple of questions for you to answer down in the comment section down below. Who do you think has been the best signing for Wolves so far this season? And who do you think, if any, are we going to miss from the players that we've let go? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're interested in travelling and South America, a friend of mine, Billy Roach, has just started a YouTube channel. He's out in South America doing some travelling at the moment for the next six months or so. He's got a couple of videos up on his channel. I'll leave a link in the description and a little button around here somewhere. Check him out. Very good friend of mine and some inspiring photos if you're interested. If you're planning your next trip, go and check his channel out and see if you like Columbia, which is where he is at the moment, in Bogota. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.